Hey, become a disciplined. Sorry, I missed you. I uh, I was supposed to start right back right after Rosh Hashanah. And uh, it's been really challenging. Uh, it was wonderful to take those two days off for Rosh Hashanah and just have a total spiritual fast. But the bad part is getting back into the, in the, the swing of things. It was very, very challenging. It was challenging to get back in the swing of things for my job. And it was back. It was challenging to get back in the swing of things regarding these videos. So it's a blessing to to take a uh, sabbatical, but it is challenging to get back in the swing of things. Not making excuses, just letting you know where I've been. Um, of course, before I share how I've been doing with my goals, I uh, I want to go ahead and provide some value. And as I provide this value, I want you to know, uh, you know, uh, here at Becoming Discipline, we teach that there are seven different types of wealth. OK, and I won't go through all of them, but one of the types of wealth is not just money, but it's it's influence. OK, um, and I have learned from a gentleman who is rising in prominence right now. His name is Andrew Bustamante, and he is a former CIA spy. And uh, him and his wife are both CIA spies. And he kind of covers this in his teaching. And uh, I got this from him. And it's been a real golden nugget that I've been using. Um, but it takes a little bit of discipline. And it's a mental practice that you have to develop in order to, you know, kind of get into this frame of mind and get into this thinking. Um, a lot of times when people take the Myers-Briggs test, they're always concerned about what their personality is. But one thing that uh, listening to Andrew Bustamante, a discipline to develop in your frame of mind is don't be focused on what your personality is. You should be focused on what are the personalities of the people that you're working with, that you're engaging with, that you're uh, that you're having to do business with. And Andrew Bustamante, he he kind of rolls it down when he was a spy, he would kind of roll it up into three questions. And the and the three questions are when he's engaging with someone, he would ask the question, where do they get their energy from? How do they process information? And how do they make decisions? And if you if you're engaging with people and you ask yourself about that those about the person you're engaging with, if you ask yourself those three questions, you will be able to relate with the person better and kind of understand where they're coming from. But it takes a discipline to kind of stop, not think about just what you want, not think about just what you want to say, but it takes a discipline to stop and listen and figure out where do they get their energy from? Listen to how they speak. How do they process information? And then finally, how do they go and make their decisions? And what and 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 you know, if you look at the Myers Briggs, there are some people who are are introverts, some people are extra extroverts, some people make their decisions intuitively, some people make their decisions rather factually and and quote unquote logically. There's different ways people make decisions, there's different ways people interpret data, and there's different ways that people go and get their energy. And, and as you engage with them, you'll better understand who it is that you're dealing with and you will end up growing an influence with the person you're engaging with once you understand them better. As Stephen Covey said, seek first to understand and then to be understood. But it takes discipline because we all, if we're not careful, we all, our knee-jerk reaction is to be concerned about self and not to be focused on what the other person's focused on and not to have our minds with the other person. My father said a long time ago, and I, and I didn't listen to him at the time, but it's so true. He says, Tony, when you're dealing with other people, it's like a poker game. Life in, with dealing with people is like a poker game. You have to hold your cards, but you have to watch the table and see how other people are playing and what cards they have. Well, this isn't meant to be, you know, I guess maybe it could be taken that way, but it's not meant to be manipulative. It's not meant to be, um, you know, to take advantage. This can be a tool that is used 
to understand who you're dealing with so that you can be more effective in your communications and in your relationship. And it, you can also be more effective in how you provide value. It's a discipline. Influence is a type of wealth. Your ability to influence and persuade people is a type of wealth. So therefore, it takes discipline to gain that wealth. And ask yourself the question, how do they get their energy? How do they process information? And finally, how do they make decisions? And as you ask yourself those questions, it'll have you thinking about who you're dealing with. Oh, and here's a separate, this isn't Andrew Bustamante, but um, my man, Ron White, also, you know, he's a memory expert. When you meet people and uh, you run into them, you should say your say their name over again. And when they say their name, picture their name. This is a, a I learned this, this tip from a memory expert. Picture their name and their face. And then also, for instance, there was this woman that I, I said I was going to pray for at the YMCA. And she said her name was Teresa. And I was like, man, I need to remember when I'm praying with my girls at night. I need to remember her name. So what I did was I said her name again out loud. And then I pictured her in uh, uh, with Mother Teresa. You know, I pictured her walking with Mother Teresa very quickly. And because I saw her walking with Mother Teresa, she had a broke, you know, this this lady from the YMCA had broken her shoulder. I said I was going to pray for her and I, I like to keep my word. So I pictured her walking with Mother Teresa with her broken shoulder. So therefore, that that's how I remember her name. And when you can remember someone's name, even though you only met them once, it's 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 a life, you know, it opens doors for you. So it, it takes discipline to focus outward and not, I was the only child growing up. So this has taken a lot of work for me. Um, yeah, I have a half brother, but he's 16 years older than me. So, um, it, it, it's taken a lot of discipline for me to, to shut my own mouth and begin to think, okay, what about who is this person I'm dealing with? What are their likes? What do they want? And Andrew Bustamante has given a, a great tool uh, with those three questions. And then also Ron White, the memory champion, has also given another tool when it comes to remembering people's names. And if you can do that, your influence will grow. My influence has grown since I've followed those. When I follow those tools and when I use those tools, my influence grows. It, my engagement with people grows and the impact that I make with them continues to grow as well. So with all of that being said, that's the value provided. Um, I've been knocking it out of the park. Uh, since I started the Alex Hormuzi diet, I am now down 12 pounds, 12 pounds. I'm hitting my goal. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Uh, as a result of following the Alex Hormuzi diet, uh, I have been, um, I've only had to take three blood pressure uh, pills in probably 12 to 13 days. Um, and I've been knocking it, I've been knocking it out of the park with my workouts. I will say this. Those are all my wins. I have to kind of share my losses too. Got to be honest. Since I took off from uh, with Rosh Hashanah and I came back to work, I have not been as focused on the job. So I've had to work into the night in order to make up time. And that's why I couldn't post my videos. So I need to work. That's that's my L. My, my L has been that it's been taking me 12 hours to do eight hours of work because getting back into my job, it's been very hard to focus. So I need to I need to lock down and do a better job with that. But uh, the videos are coming and they're coming back again. Uh, tomorrow, the goal is eight hours, 8.5 hours of uh, focused work. Um, and you know what? The gym is not in the agenda tomorrow because uh, I have the doctor's office. And then right after the doctor's office, me and my wife are going on a date. 
So the only goal for tomorrow is staying within the 2,500 calories and working 8.5 hours and being highly focused. And those are my only two goals. Stay, uh, because uh, it's a date night and I don't get too many of those with my, with my lovely. And uh, I'm going to be fasting pretty much all the way until my doctor's appointment at 345. And hopefully I can get off the high blood pressure medicine, hopefully, uh, because I've been doing so good with my diet and I'm down 12 pounds, but I still got a long way to go. The goal is for my 50th birthday in February, I don't want to be over, excuse me, I don't want to be considered obese anymore. I want to move from obese to just overweight. And I've got a lot of poundage to move before February, but we're going to keep at it. And so far I'm on track. All right, y'all be blessed. I'm excited. Uh, videos are coming back again. And uh, I will be more faithful to the videos because, um, you know, I will be faithful until we have uh, the Day of Atonement is coming up and I, I follow that as well. So I'll take off a day for the Day of Atonement and I will get back on it quicker than I did this time. All right, y'all be blessed and take care.